Hey guys, welcome back to MuscleMentor.net. I'm Brad Hall and this is Justin Harris and we're gonna do a little video or a couple of videos here on uh, on blood work. So Justin, go ahead. Let's start with, uh, well, the good thing about social media is it, it has a lot of people doing blood work finally, which people were scared to do for years. They didn't want to know what was wrong. I think people are finally learning now that they can find out what's wrong and make corrections before it gets so wrong that you have to you have to stop everything. Before it's too late, yeah. yeah. And so the biggest thing I always preach for, for bodybuilders to look at is is uh, you, you have to control your blood pressure. And the way high blood pressure is gonna reveal itself, there's a few things that are gonna reveal itself on blood work. Primarily, if your blood pressure's been high long enough to start affecting things, it's gonna start affecting the kidneys and you're gonna see uh, your kidney values go, go wrong. And I'll kind of, I'll try to quickly explain that why blood pressure is so bad. So, you, you know, your heart pumps, and if there's high blood pressure, your heart has to pump against a higher pressure. I mean, there's that pressure in the, in the blood, so your, your heart has to squeeze against it. So what happens? Your heart is a muscle like any other muscle, so when it's pumping against a heavier weight or a heavier load, it's going to thicken up. The problem is, you know, our muscles grow outside of our body. The way the heart muscle grows is it grows inside the cavity. So you have a hole that the heart can pump through. The muscle grows inward and makes the cavity smaller, which means then it has to beat faster. So it's doing more contractions against a heavy weight with a stronger muscle and it continues to grow, grow thicker. And what, the other thing that happens is that the high blood pressure damages the kidneys. The kidneys are just a filter. So you can imagine if you had a coffee filter under your kitchen sink, it would run forever. It would just filter through. Now put a fire hose through, through a coffee filter. It's going to start ripping holes in the filter, making it filter less effectively. So what happens is the high blood pressure affects the heart, thickens the heart muscle, and then it starts damaging the kidney, making the kidney not filter as effectively. Well then, uh, when the kidney doesn't filter as effectively, toxins, toxins and things build up in the blood. It stops getting as, it's, it's not as good at clearing fluid. So what happens? You get fluid buildup. What happens when you have a limited volume of space in your, in your blood vessels and, and higher amounts of fluid, goes the pressure down. goes up even higher. Well, pretty soon what happens is the heart muscle is too small. There's so much fluid, it can't keep pumping all that fluid out. So what happens is the heart has to kind of find some way to keep surviving. So it compensates by dilating. And eventually, it, so it dilates and gets bigger, but that's bad because it's weaker in that, in that state. So it can't contract as strong now. And eventually you get what's called a dilated cardiomyopathy. And then, so it's not pumping blood as well. Blood pressure continues. And by this point, you're in a cascade. And this is when kidney failure happens. Because blood pressure continues to climb. Toxins continue to climb. The heart's less efficient. Fluid levels build up to the point where you start running into issues like pneumonia. And if you remember, any bodybuilder who's had, uh, had kidney failure, there's been, there's been issues with pneumonia or, or fluid in their lungs or things like that. That's why it's a backup of fluid. And it, and it turns into, in, into, you know, one of the primary first indicators, easiest indicators is kidney damage. And there's three main kidney markers. There's BUN, creatinine, and then GFR, glomerular filtration rate. And the most important one for true kidney function, how well your kidneys are actually doing. You can get elevated BUN and creatinine levels, but if your GFR, your GFR typically is pretty linear. It starts very high when you're young and it goes down until you get really old and and it decreases. And so it doesn't typically go like this. I mean, either the kidney's getting damaged or it doesn't. The kidney yeah. isn't something that repairs itself like it's, the liver. It's, yeah, it's not like the liver where, yeah. where it, can, it can repair itself over time. The kidney is a, a one-shot Johnny. If you, if you damage them, then that's, you know, it, it's, not, it's not something that the consequences can be reversed. Yeah. So. so you really want to watch your GFR. And most of the time, they, they don't record it if, until it's below 60. Anything above 60 is uh, it's just not recorded. And there's two markers. It'll say non-AA... Uh, non-AA and uh, AA. Non-AA is non-African American right. and AA is, is any other ethnicity. And the thing with that is uh, African Americans tend to have a higher muscle mass and higher creatinine levels. And so the GFR is actually not a true measurement. It's a calculated measurement. And it's a calculation based off your creatinine levels. And so the first thing you need to do is if you get a GFR and you're heavily muscled, or if you have a GFR under 60, there's, there's a chance you're still okay. You need to get a creatine clearance uh, uh, measurement. And what you'll do is you'll pee into a jug for 24 hours and it'll actually measure the amount of creatinine uh, cleared from the butt, not, not, just, uh, not just give an estimation of your GFR. But you really don't want that to go down. And now we'll look at the other two values, BUN and creatinine. The thing that's funny with BUN is the medical community actually views that as a as a marker of, uh, of how anabolic you are, a marker of anabolism, it's blood urea and nitrogen. And so high blood urea and nitrogen levels indicate that there isn't protein synthesis occurring. 
And so in, in highly anabolic visuals, BUN can actually be low, even when other values are high. And so the primary marker you want to look at is, is someone, and plus with BUN, you're eating a lot of protein and you have a lot of protein breakdown from training. So BUN can be all over the place. You don't, you don't want it high. And you certainly don't want it high because it indicates you're, you're, you're not being anabolic. You're breaking down muscle right. tissue typically. But the most important one for bodybuilders of those two is creatinine. You do not want your creatinine to go high. It's very difficult to get down once it's up because it, it's, it's a byproduct of things like, uh, you know, it, muscle damage, protein content in your food. And so it's very difficult to decrease that living a true bodybuilding lifestyle. So you really want, want to keep that, that down. Otherwise, you're going to have to take a, an, an actual break for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, number one, watch your GFR. Ask, they can test it above 60. If you want to get a true value, you might have to pay more, but ask for it if you're curious. Two, don't trust the GFR if you're heavily muscled. But if it is, if it is below 60, get a creatinine clearance test, 24-hour clearance test. And three, track your creatinine. And don't try not to let it above 1.2. And if, it, if it, it starts getting above 1.2, that's your mark that you need to start changing things to, before you get to the point where you have to go off everything. So start making adjustments. Reduce, reduce your protein, get blood work, uh, recheck blood work when, it's, when you haven't trained for three days to see if there's any creatinine uh, difference there. You know, make sure you're really on it with your fluid intake and, and things like that.